Hey everyone, M Tash here. There's two of me. There's one in the corner with my initial reaction, and then there's me talking about it now. So we're gonna go over the 2.3 live stream. We just watched it live. We're on Twitch. We're having a good time, and uh, I'm gonna give you my thoughts on everything, and then I'm gonna give you my overall package thoughts. If you want the quick and dirty before I begin, it is another filler-esque patch. It does look like they've got kind of an advanced looking event. There, there's a there's a big albedo event, it seems. There's even a hidden boss, apparently, in that event. So that looks pretty sweet. Uh, but there is a lot of filler, and there's actually a lot of repeat events. Marvelous merchandise, the energy amplifier event, which is cool. There's a boss. There is a lot of repeat events here. So if you're expecting a whole bunch of new content, the only stuff is new characters, a boss to farm materials for said characters, and then we do have a big dragon spine event. But the repeats... I mean, those are returning content that maybe you love or maybe it's just some free Primo gems. But let's talk about this first character. So one of the things is he's like skinny. <laughs> uh, he's a tall, skinny boy. I was expecting Arataki Ito to be a beefy boy like Wagner. I thought he was going to be a, a tank. And you look at that. <laughs> you kind of see my reaction. I'm like, hmm, I'm seeing this guy and I thought he was just gonna be this jacked monster I also I'm hearing the voice actor for the first time and the voice actor is fine. Like, you know, he's an interesting character I just expected Arataki Ito to be like here we go boys ready rip, you know, like this big uh, Kind of animal dude. I, I expected him to be a, a, a beefy boy with like a, I'm part of the gang, baby you know, something like that kind of voice where he's just a badass and uh, and sounds powerful. And he's just kind of a, he's just kind of a, a dude. Pretty generic kind of voice to me. And he's just, he's kind of skinny. He's like D-Luke body type, like really like tall and skinny. And you know, he's got some abs drawn on there for sure. It might be a marker. I don't know. It's not the end of the world. Like is what it is. But then his kit, his kit for me is a little, uh, it, it's fine. Obviously we need to see the multiplier, like the multipliers and, People who get constellations are gonna care about the constellations, but if you don't like Razor, I don't think you will like this character. It's like a Geo Amber mixed with Razor. <laughs> That's the best way I'd describe it. He's got his little cow, which is a taunt, and his ultimate infuses, does geo damage, had some big AoE on it, and that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. The interesting thing, the one thing about his uh, kind of kit, the mechanic that is interesting is the basic attack combo doesn't get interrupted, even if you're popping your E ability and your ultimate. So you can actually get those higher damage multipliers later uh, in the burst or, or, or later in the chain consistently, which is honestly pretty cool. That might be uh, valuable. And the only thing is, is he scales off defense. That is always an interesting thing. He's probably going to come out with a, a defense scaling claymore, which is going to give him some damage. There's some other things going on in game that, that will help him out, like the new Goro character. Yeah, there's, there's some potential to make him work here, but my hype for him has gone down quite a bit. He's like almost a for sure skip for me. And I guess one of the big reasons why is with Geo uninfused, a Geo character has to do like 50% more damage than any pyro or cryo type character. Anyone who's vaporizing or melting, getting 50% or even 100% more damage, the amount of damage you have to dish out to compete with that is very, very tough. He would have to hit crazy. Now, Eula does physical damage, and she she pops off. She does a bunch of burst, and so it is possible. You never know. Maybe he's got crazy geo damage, but it's just not the most hype thing for me. If I'm if I'm being honest. Now, Goro. Here is the thing. Let me let me just pause this for a second. Goro. <laughs> I feel like Goro is essentially a elemental resonance. The character. <laughs> <laughs> you put a bunch of Geo characters together and you put Goro and they get stronger and you put him on the field and he just supports them But it does sound pretty powerful. You gain defense you gain I, I believe it's like interruption resistance or whatever it's called And then the last one is a Geo damage bonus So if you're using Irataki Ito defense scaling and Geo damage hog if you're using Albedo defense and Geo damage right like you're getting two bursts of damage there so it could be very valuable, but again, you're missing out on elemental reactions. You're not going to be melting or vaporizing or, or, or doing anything like that. And so maybe that does make up for it and you're going to hit like a truck. But Goro without Geo characters is literally useless. And I need to harp on that. I need to, I need to do that. If you are not using Geo and spamming Geo, this character is minus F tier. It is, he is so bad that he is 
beyond useless. Like the worst character in the game, most likely. If you're using Geo, Pog, you're getting some value. I, I guess I want to say it because maybe people don't know or they don't like really understand stats or what they do, but his kit is so one dimensional that pulling for him because you're like, oh, he's really cute. He's, he's dead weight on your team if you're not using any sort of Geo characters. They want you to get Albedo, Goro, and they want you to get Iritaki Ado, or Ido. They want you to get those three. You've got Albedo support, Goro support, and then they want you to use Ido. That's what they want. And they're going to make the Spiral Abyss Geo bonuses and Geo focused, and that's what they want. And uh, it can probably work. It's probably gonna hit hard, but that is a lot of investment, right? That's two five-star characters, a four-star character, maybe even some constellations to make it even stronger to make it work. And that's that's just to get it going. That's just to get the battery running. It doesn't mean it's gonna be uh, an amazing thing. Now this is interesting. This one is really interesting. Albedo rerun. We saw that coming a mile away. I knew it was coming. Here's the thing, Eula is getting a rerun as well. She's actually going to be in the new uh, Albedo quest on Dragon Spawn. Pretty sweet. These banners are running together at the exact same time. This isn't two banners separated. When the Albedo banner drops, so will Eula. But here is the interesting thing. This is most likely a change for the rest of Genshin Impact is they will release rerun banners at the same time. And that's gonna give more options for Zhongli to come back and Venti to come back and have these characters come back. And so rotating through them, it's gonna be a lot more accessible. And if you're a newer player to the game who's maybe jumping in, maybe it's easier for you to get some of these staple top tier characters. Maybe we're gonna see some Kazuha sooner rather than later. That's really cool though. Here's the crazy thing. If you looked at Albedo and all the four stars on the banner are trash and you look at Eula's banner and all of hers are amazing, hypothetically, you could actually pull on Eula's banner to build pity and then try to snipe the five star. You know, that is a risk because you could absolutely get the five star early, but with these double banners, the pity is shared. That 90 wish pity is shared. So hypothetically, you could try to snipe four stars on one banner and then wish on the other. But again, you could blow your pity. You could get a character you don't want. That is very, very risky. Interesting system. Maybe that's cool to you. So we got the character wishes that uh, Ido and Goro is gonna be, they're gonna be on the same banner and then we'll see what the four stars are. That banner for me, I mean, I'm gonna make a video on it when I know the other four stars. This is like a beyond skip for me. <laughs> this is a beyond skip for me. Or is it because of, uh, the artifacts that I'm going to show you in just a second. We've got uh, a new quest, which we know about. Also, hangouts for Beto and Goro. So it doesn't actually show what the Claymore does. Looks really, you know, badass. Pretty sweet Claymore. But um, let me read this for you because it might be a little bit small. This new Husk of Opulent Dreams is Albedo. It is Irtaki Ido. It is anyone who scales with defense, Noel. It is an amazing artifact for them. The two-piece set is a juicy, 30% defense right there, but really tiny text. A character equipped with the set will obtain the effect with the following conditions. When on the field, the character gains one stack after hitting an opponent with a geo attack, triggering a maximum every 0.3 seconds, which means you can stack this up relatively quickly. You could spam uh, attacks and get that quickly. When off the field, the character gains one stack every three seconds. So if you have some sort of passive like Albedo, he can gain stacks even if he's not on the field. Goro can do that as well because he has some passive damage, passive AOE. Here's the beauty. It stacks up to four times, each providing 6% more defense and 6% geo damage. And it lasts for six whole seconds before resetting. So as long as you're generating some geo damage every once in a while, you're gonna get a whopping 24% defense, 24% geo damage thrown into your kit, which is a lot of damage. This is a pretty cracked artifact. Is this gonna be God tier on someone like Ning Wong who isn't scaling with defense? Mm, not, not so sure about that. Uh, Zhang Li, I'm not sure if that would be best in slot for him. You don't really need that geo damage or defense that bad. So he's probably better on maybe like a mill list set, but it is a pretty cool set. This is opening some doors for Albedo to hit a little bit harder. And I would say this is a very niche set, but we need niche sets. There's niche sets for a lot of different characters in the game. And you know, characters like Noel, Characters like Ido, they need this to really thrive. And so this is a win for me. Now, here's another one. Uh, this one is a whole ass, 
uh, paragraph. Let me read what this does. A 15% healing bonus. Oh boy, who's gonna get some big heals now? When the character equipped the artifact heals a character in the party, Sea Dryad Foam will appear for three seconds, accumulating the amount of HP recovered from healing. At the end of the duration, the Sea Foam will explode, dealing damage to nearby opponents based on 90% of the accumulated healing. This damage is calculated similarly, uh, similarly to reactions such as Electro Charge, Superconduct, but it is not affected by Elemental Mastery. So you can get bonuses for that, which is interesting. Each Sea Foam can accumulate up to 30,000 HP, which means you could do a burst of 27,000 damage. So you throw your healer on the field. Kokomi is putting out heals, putting out DPS, this procs, and then all of a sudden, bop, you get another burst of damage. I don't know how valuable 27,000 potential damage is. I don't know how easy it's going to be to stack up all of that healing. I've never really built a healer to, to heal that hard, but um, this is almost like adding a damage set of some sort or like some passive damage to your healers, and it's interesting. It is definitely interesting. The other thing you have to remember is if your character is getting healed by Kakomi, or if you're looking at someone like uh, Chi Chi doing her basic attacks or Jean doing basic attacks, those attacks, even if they're only healing a little bit, you have to remember all four characters are getting it at the same time. So it actually might stack up faster than you think, but it's only three seconds. So 30,000 healing in three seconds. I don't know. And I don't know if you can pair this with other healing. Like like if, if you're standing in a Bennett ult, will that trigger it? And like, will it trick it and proc? I don't know. It's an interesting one. This pretty niche. I I don't know if I would recommend uh, grinding that out. It seems like it's focused on just that character with it equipped healing their team specifically. So unless there is some tricky stuff, I think it's going to be harder to proc than you might think. Then there's the boss. The boss is going to be fun to fight, but if you don't need to farm for Ido or Goro, you don't need to fight this boss. And so I've seen a lot of arguments about this in the past. This isn't content because content is something that everyone needs to do and should do and like grind out. And, and you can fight the boss, but this is a, this is essentially a meaningless, useless boss unless you have the new characters, which is, you know, it is it is what it is. But um, I think it's going to be a fun fight. You're probably going to see this boss in the abyss. It's just not going to be something you're grinding out and, and really getting to interact with and enjoy unless you have those characters. And, uh, and then this is a big event. Now, they said there's a hidden boss in this. Cinnabar Spindle. Now, I'm not going to leak anything, but rumor has it. Really, really, really good Albedo sword, maybe? I don't know. Imagine if it scaled with defense or something and was literally best in slot for him and could proc 100% of the time with his new artifact set. Wow, we R5, what an amazing opportunity that would be. If it happens to be such a specific sword for one character in the game, if you don't have Albedo, this is literally a useless, like, pretty much useless sword for anyone else in the game. There's no other sword users that scale with defense. This is essentially a wasted item if you don't have Albedo. You should still get it in case a new character comes out. You never really know, but it is very focused. It's not like Festering Desire or the catch that you can throw on any character and it's going to have a lot of value. So uh, just something to consider is if you never ever plan on getting Albedo and you're really strapped on time, Maybe you skip it, but I would never skip any of those R5 type weapons because they're not coming back ever. They're not coming back ever. It might be a game changer for some other character down the road. This event is essentially mini games again, but apparently there is a boss. So you're going to have some of these things. And uh, this is kind of like the, the wind glider event. I, I don't remember, but you had to collect all the coins. It's pretty passive, pretty easy content. So you can log in and do this as the event goes on. And then there is melting rocks of ice. There, there's melting ice minigame where you melt ice. N no, seriously, you, you run around melting ice. Now this one, you interact with these little portals uh, or these little these little uh, mechanici and then uh, some hilly trills spawn you to kill them. So very basic event. I think we're used to this. You can kind of see my... <laughs> you can see my reaction in the corner there. I'm like, oh no, really? Pretty basic, but it is what it is. Okay, this event is essentially Pokemon. So this is pretty cute. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. There's a bunch of little hidden hidden pets that you need to release. You've got these guards. I think it'll be pretty funny. These little doggos have swords in their tails and their and their little mouths. It's cute. All right, it is what it is. But once you finish all the event, you grind it out and get this all done, you essentially get a Pokeball. And you can go to some of the smaller creatures on the map and you can catch them 
and you can turn them into pets for the Serena Teapot. So if you're a Serena Teapot grinder, uh, this is for you. Look at that. Just capture that fox. You can get a copy of it. And I don't know all the animals that it work on, but they kind of made a joke. Like, can you go capture like a thousand pigeons and be like Timmy? And so if you're interested in that, cool, cool, cool. Energy amplifier. This was a very popular event. You do the amplifier events and then you can use some of these bonuses for big boss fights and things like that. The amplifier events. I think this is a pretty well received event. But this is a repeat event and it's not bringing anything new to the table. We're also getting the Misty Dungeon back. So if you missed it, this was an interesting little roguelike-esque dungeon. Super easy content once again. You make your way through the dungeon, you interact with all the things you see, and then typically you drop down through the floor in the middle and you fight a, a boss of some sort or, or some sort of enemy. And uh, again, this is just free Primo Gems. Show up and win. And typically they even give you some juiced up characters. Actually, I don't even think you can use your own characters. You can see they're all trial characters. So you just show up and you can have a trash account and beat it pretty easy. Marvelous Merchandise. Walk up to the guy, get free resources. This one is pretty basic. And this is the big content. This is the end game content. I don't know if you saw that. I don't know if you, you realized it. You can see my reaction. You can now get Paimon in your Serena teapot. So finally, the devs are listening. Finally, we have some actual content in the game. Uh, I will be focusing this day one, making sure I can get Paimon in my Serena teapot. I want to converse with her. Apparently, she even has new voice lines. So that is just like, that's a must. And I would recommend if you don't have a lot of time, you do prioritize this so you can get Paimon in your Serena teapot. It's not going away or anything. This is a permanent feature, but you obviously want Paimon in your Serena teapot ASAP so you can really uh, enjoy that friendship. Now, uh, that's pretty much it for the live stream. I don't think I missed anything. There's another code there. Uh, I'll put the codes in the description of the video. One thing I want to say that's positive here, this was one of the least cringy showcases I, I think they've done. Albedo is, was riffing off some jokes and they weren't forced to giggle. In a lot of the other live streams, it was like, wow, that's crazy. <laughs> and they were, like, I, I think it said in there, laugh now immediately when they say that line laugh but in this one they were just kind of just joking around and there was a couple of genuine giggles and uh it sounded a lot more genuine it was a lot easier to listen to this whole live stream so good job I i'm sure i'm sure they took some feedback but also they're given a script and they're forcing them to laugh and so everyone who's like this is cringy it's not their fault and people are like attacking the voice actors and it's like they're really cool cool people they're showing up they're trying to give you all the news and they're not trying to be cringy and like annoying and it, they're forced to do it. They're, con they're contractually forced to do it. And so to hear them like this and just to have their own kind of conversation with things and be more natural, I think this was way, way better for me. And uh, I, I, I really enjoy the voice actors. I thought Albeda was absolutely hilarious, like just kind of trolling around. So that was pretty cool. My overall thoughts now, we know. It's it's filler. It's filler. The game the game is mini game simulator. Is Genshin Impact made to appeal to like Animal Crossing players? There's nothing wrong with that. This is a super accessible game. I could recommend this to anyone. Young people, new gamers to the genre. It's very welcoming. You can get some rewards. You get some characters. I think Genshin Impact is is honestly a game changing game. But if you are an end game grinder, if you really care about stats and end game and raids and farming and stuff, you're not going to be uh, very overwhelmed with content or excited about a lot of the content. And it just is what it is. So if you've been playing since the start, it, it is more just kind of mini games and fun stuff. If you're a new player, if you love anime content, if you want to just explore the world like a Zelda game, do it. Do it. I mean, there's there's lots to do there. Uh, I think you're going to have a lot of fun. But uh, if you are an endgame grinder, disappointment will be upon you. Or at least just another kind of lull and boredom. Uh, the only reason I might sound a little jaded or negative is just because I am kind of one of those endgame grinders. Uh, I am burnt out. I've been playing since the start. And for endgame players like myself... Um, going to an area and like fighting hilly churls, it just isn't really, um, it just really isn't exciting anymore. Stuff like this is kind of dated for right now or, or not dated, but it's just, it's just kind of like we, we've been there. We've done events identical to this for a year. So nothing wrong with this stuff. It's just more of the same and they're, they're not really innovating or breaking the mold. And that is how I feel. Uh, when the new artifacts and stuff come out, uh, I'll definitely talk about them more, you know, maybe do some like build stuff, talk about the new characters. I really want to see the constellations of Goro. I, I want to see Edo's constellations, but I really want to see the scaling and how they're going to take geo characters and a full geo team 
and compete with things like melt and vaporize and all these other damage modifiers that are available because I think it is a little tough. That's it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I know this is a bit long winded, but now you know everything that's coming in the new update. Get your hype on, baby. I'm MTASH. This video is sponsored by Hyundai and the new Tucson. And I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.